Well, good morning, church. Good morning. I welcome you all in the lovely name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a, a big change. I'm very excited to see people sitting in the, the seats here instead of just having uh, the seats and looking at a camera. But we still have the camera going for those that can't make it to the service and for those that are watching us in other parts of the world. We welcome you too to the house of the Lord. And uh, as the psalmist said, it is good to be in the house of the Lord. It is great to be in the house of the Lord. And uh, this morning we're going to just rejoice. The restrictions are that we still can't uh, sing and do praise and worship. But we can sit and listen to some praise and worship. And in our minds and in our thoughts, praise and worship the Lord. Because, you know, we believe that He is here. We're in His presence and we thank Him for that. So let us bow our heads and just speak to the Lord this morning. Heavenly Father, You are so great. Holy Spirit, we welcome You. Move amongst us, touching every heart this morning. Lord, even for those that aren't with us right here in person, Lord, we pray, Lord, Your Holy Spirit will just touch their hearts as well this morning. That you will touch our ears, Lord. That you will touch our heart. And Lord, every word that is spoken from your word, Lord, will be buried deep inside of us, Lord, and bring about a desired change, Lord. We thank you that you are our God, that you are our Savior. And that we can come and that we can meet together with our brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we continue this morning of the service, Lord, we, we just ask your blessing upon us, Lord. We ask a move of your spirit amongst us, Lord. And not just for an excitement, Lord, but Lord, for a strengthening and empowerment so that we can do the work and be the examples that you want us to be. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. I have a number of announcements to make to you. First one is, is that we're back. We are allowed to have church and uh, there are some restrictions and uh, uh, you'll hear more about the service this morning. The, the word that the Lord gave me is that God is very interested in our lives. And part of his interest in our lives is, is that what you call it. He tells us that we would be blessed if we go through some persecution. As, as, as much as we would say, we don't want any persecution. Well, <clears throat> the church has always been persecuted. Even when Jesus was on the earth preaching, there was people that were persecuting him as well as his followers. And that is not going away because it's written in the word that we are here and we will have difficult times. We have been spared a lot of persecution throughout the time that we live in the Western world. And we've been praying for those that live in countries where the church is so persecuted that they can even lose their lives at the mention of the name of Jesus. Now, the few little restrictions that we have got in place uh, seem harsh for us. And we need to accept that and say that we will bear with that because we know that God has great plans for us. He will take us beyond where we're at at this point. So we need to be wearing masks. We are not allowed to sing as, as a group together. We can have one person come and, 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 and sing for us. Uh, but as such, we can't as a group sing. So, uh, but we will have praise and worship differently until such time as those restrictions are removed. We also have to social distance, so hopefully uh, as the people come and the, the church fills up, that people will, what you call it, understand. And if necessary, if there are too many people coming, we will turn and have two services. You know, our sister church in uh, Surrey, uh, Calvary, are having four to six services a day because of the numbers they have been having outdoor services even just with 10 people 
because that was the restriction. Uh, and uh, what you got. So they were able to, to still feed the sheep. And uh, God bless them for their efforts and time uh, in doing that. But we will also move to more than one service if necessary. Now in connection with our donations, I just need to remind you that you can bring them in person again because we're open again. And uh, you can also mail it to our PO Box, PO Box 329 Rosedale. Or you can e-transfer uh, your money as a donation to the church folcc.rosedale at gmail.com particulars are on the website of the Fountain of Life Church uh, for those of you that, that want to do that or prefer to do that those are the notices besides that next week we will be having communion together as well as service at 10 o'clock again please let somebody know that you don't see around today that has been at the church even if they're not members it's not a question of having a membership to come uh, people are welcome and if you have family or friends in the area and they want to go to church we're available to seat them and accommodate them in the house of the Lord now I want to tell you that we're going to be listening to three songs and as we listen, I want you to enter in to worshipping and praising God. You can lift your hands. You can stand. You can sit. You're just not allowed to sing out loud. You can be singing in your mind and singing. But you need to keep on your masks. And that's how it has to be at this point of time. So come let us start to worship the Lord. Heavenly Father, as we, we just enter into your presence this morning. We say, Lord, that we would be a blessing unto you, Lord. That our praises would rise up to your very throne room, Lord. Because, Lord, that's in our hearts. We want to rejoice, Lord, because we've had this time, Lord, where there, there seems to be a dryness in our spirits, Lord. And we're excited to be in your house this morning. To lift up your name and exalt you on high. Thank you, Daniel.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Daniel.
praise the Lord. You know that God is so interested in every one of us that not only did He send His Son Jesus Christ to die for us on the cross, but He sent us His Holy Spirit. You know, we've just gone through a period known in the Bible as Pentecost when Jesus told His disciples, He said, you go to Jerusalem and you wait until the Holy Spirit comes upon you before you go out into the world and fulfill the Great Commission. And the disciples were very faithful. And they went and they waited in Jerusalem. And on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was poured out upon them. And the Bible describes it as, as like tongues of fire appeared on, on their heads. And they started speaking in different tongues and in different languages. And in the languages of other people who were there, but it wasn't the language of that person speaking it. And the, the Holy Spirit empowered them with the, the, the go-ahead power that they needed to go out into all the world and to preach the gospel. The Great Commission. And Jesus made that promise in the book of John chapter 14 verse 27. He said what you call it, I am leaving you with a gift. A gift of peace of mind, peace of heart, and a gift that the world cannot give you. So don't be troubled, so don't be afraid. And in the world that we're living in today, church, not only must we take hold of the gift that Jesus promised us, the Holy Spirit, because that's what's going to give us peace of mind and peace in our heart, because the world is in turmoil and in trouble. And if you, you turn on the news and you, you watch things that are happening all over the world, even just in, in our local town, someone was murdered this week again. It becomes frightening and scary. And the only way you're going to find peace and not be afraid and not be troubled is if you accept this gift that God has given us. And that's another thing to just say, you know, that's how much He loves us. That's how, how interested God is in our lives, that He sent us His Holy Spirit. Now, there, there's things that, that, that we as the church and we as Christians have been doing, and people in the world also do this. The moment we speak about God, people get all etherical. It's like, oh, it's just about the spiritual. It's about all the unseen things, and, 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 and it's... And it's uh, uh, it's strange. The average concept of man about God is, 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 is very weird, really, when you think of it. People think that God is only interested in the spiritual part of our lives. But, you know, <laughs> we just have to look around us. We just have to look at the grandeur of where we live. The growth of things that are taking place as spring arrives. The thunder and lightning that took place this week. The wonderful huge moon that appeared and even an eclipse of the moon that, that took place. You know, God made these things for us to behold. For us to see. What? To see His mighty power and who He is. Because He is the almighty God. All-powerful God. The creator of the universe. Now we know and people know and acknowledge the greatness of God. And that, that He is the creator. And that there is power in the, in the forces of nature. Such as lightning and volcanoes that are erupting. And earthquakes and, and storms and all these things. But today I want to tell you we're going to have to start thinking of God in a different way. And I want to make this statement to you that God is interested in every aspect of your life. Not only in the aspects of your life for futuristic when you're going to be with Him one day. But for your life right here and now. 
You see, He has made many promises for us. He said, I'll give you eternal life. Life after a physical death. But we need not wait until we die to receive the blessings that God has in store for us. The blessings He has for us are our inheritance through the Lord Jesus Christ. And that inheritance is for right now, church, for the life we live right now on this earth. You know, right now, God has a plan for your pleasure. God has a plan for your daily living. He has a plan for your enjoyment, for the things that you would want, the things that He has promised us here on earth. And, and I'll just give you a short little list. You can find them all in His Word. These are not things that I'm saying that, that God has shown me. These are things that, that come from God's Word, that He's shown me in His Word. He said, I'll supply all your needs. According to my riches, according to the riches of God, the creator of the universe, the, the one who all, all belongs to. He will supply all your needs. You know, he's broken it down. He says, by my stripes you will be healed. You've got to get hold of that church. He says, I'll carry your burdens. He says, my yoke is light that I give to you. It's not heavy. He says, I'll protect you from the evil one. He said, I've saved you from sin, death, and the grave. He even goes further and says, I'll give you the desires of your heart. And because of these statements that he makes in his word, these promises that God has made to us, I, can, I am convinced that no Christian, no believer, Needs to be a beggar, needs to be poverty stricken, needs to live a defeated life, needs to live a life that leads to depression. I believe that and I'm convinced that every Christian, every believer needs to live, live a life of victory. As the Bible says, from victory unto victory. As we move forward from one to the next, just growing closer to God, we will receive more from Him. We will we'll know more about Him. We will know more about His ways. You see, God has intended us as children of God to be an example to others. He tells us in His words, you're my ambassadors. You're my hands and you're my feet. What kind of ambassador of the Almighty God are we if we're struggling and defeated and feel downtrodden and are depressed and sad and, and all that? What kind of ambassador are we? You know, worldly ambassadors sent to another country. They're given a fantastic vehicle to drive around in that country. They're given a mansion to live in. Their food bill is taken care of. They can spend and splurge and, and, and live, live it up and, and show the rest of the world. You know, I'm the ambassador for Canada. Well, I tell you today, church, I'm an ambassador for the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm an ambassador for the King of all kings and the God Almighty. I'm a king's child. And for that reason, what you call it, I've got to accept that what God has given me. That's how interested it is in us, church. He doesn't want us to be downtrodden and live a life that just ekes out a living. He's alive. He's all powerful. He's almighty. He has all authority over heaven and earth. Our God is a mighty conqueror, church. As we read the Word of God and we read to the very end, everything will bow their knee and come to giving Jesus Christ the glory. The God of our universe. And we as children, we as Christians live a defeated life. Well, I want to tell you today, I want, I want us to start claiming that the defeats in our lives will no longer be defeats. But that we will have victory over the things that are defeating us. That we will take hold of the inheritance that we have received from our Lord Jesus Christ and from God Himself. 
You see, George, Jesus bought us with his blood. With his life. He paid for us. The moment you become born again and accept the Lord Jesus as your Savior and you believe that He has forgiven you, you know that you belong to Him. And the Almighty God, the Creator of the universe, becomes your Heavenly Father. The fact is that you become an heir of God. You become a joint heir of God's Son. I want you to think about this question. Starts off with we as people, we know that we live on this earth and that sometimes we inherit something. But what would you think of a person who all of a sudden inherits millions of dollars? Has a bank account with more than 16 figures tucked away and they have access to it and that person refuses to go and draw out one dollar to improve his or her life and to change things refuses to take hold of that inheritance Allowing its resources to lie dormant in a bank, in a trust account. Just to lie dormant and maybe accumulate some more interest. And that person went on living a defeated life. Well, I have one thing to say to you, church. All that person is seeking is pity. I think the Bible would call that person as being foolish. You and I need to realize who we are in the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to draw on the account of our inheritance. You know that it is rightly ours. It is rightly ours. And it's not what I'm telling you, it's what the Bible says to me. If you are a Christian, you are a somebody in the eyes of God. You are his heir. And all his resources, all the resources of the kingdom are there for you to live right now. But in spite of all this, there are thousands or even millions of people in this world who are living a defeated and a depressed life. Just, just, just think of that. You're a born again believer. You're a Christian. You've given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. He has saved you. You know that there's, there's proof of that. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. It's recorded there. It's recorded in heaven. And it's not recorded by some scribe, it's recorded by God Himself. You know, the world has been going through, and we, we ourselves have been going through times of, of trouble. There's been this COVID-19, brought down a, a, a large result of a lot of people living in, in, in completely depression because they can't mix with other people. They, <coughs> excuse me, they uh, find themselves in isolation. And it hasn't been pleasant and it's still not pleasant. But we forget the goodness that we have received from our God. The inheritance that we have. You know, even if you live in a country that is poverty stricken, even if you live in a country where starvation is the norm, famine in many parts of the world, 
many parts of the world there's just been some natural disasters that have taken everything that these people had and destroyed it but there's one thing that you and I have we have the word of God and you know what the word of God tells us Psalms of Solomon chapter 2 verse 16 has these three words to say to us today three words that I want you to memorize and whenever things get difficult whenever you feel downtrodden that these three words I am his I belong to the king of all kings I am the Lord child he has saved me he has plucked me out of darkness into his glorious light. I belong to him. It's not words that I'm saying that you. It's God saying that you are his. You are his. I'll give you two more scriptures and there's many more in the Bible. You can go and research them for yourselves where, where he speaks about you as his child. Romans chapter 8 verse 17. He says, and since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. Not only are we just heirs of God's kingdom, we are heirs of his glory. Think about that. You know, he's actually saying to us that he places us nearly on a par with Jesus Christ as his children. Galatians chapter 4 verse 7. Now you are no longer a slave, but God's own child. God's own child and since you are his child God has made you his heir God himself church has made you his heir given you the right of the inheritance through Christ you know it's something for us to be glad and rejoice about and things that what you call it we can we, we, we can just just not imagine the unseen things seen. When things get difficult and when things creep into our lives where we, we don't feel that we are the overcomers, we cry out and say, I am His. I am His. I belong to the King of all kings. I'm a child of God. I want that to permeate through your whole body, through your whole being, not just in your mind. But to, to bury it in your heart. I am his. I belong to God. And he's interested in me. He's interested in my daily things. What's happening to me. You know he says that. He knows every hair that falls out of my head. Well ask my wife. I lose plenty of them. She tells me every now and again. She's vacuuming. She says how much more hair can you lose? And God says, I know that. He says, he knows the thoughts I even think before I think them. Can, can you imagine that? He, he, you know, he loves you so much. He says, I'll carry you in the palm of my hand. He, he's there. He's here with us, church. So do we need to worry? Do we need to grow upset and, and then go into a state of depression or go into a state of saying life has defeated me, I've lost all hope? And then he makes us the promise, he says I'll carry your burdens. But you know we, we hold on to those burdens ourselves. We, we, it's like a strapped on backpack that you can't find the cloth to take it off. 
is stuck to you. He says he'll share those burdens with us. You see, because he knows he, we cannot carry it alone. He knows that the things that we are experiencing in our life can overwhelm us, can overtake our minds, can, can, can push us into a state of, of where we, we get depressed and we find that there's no hope. When the pressure comes, we need to, to pass our problems on to God. You see, God is there for us, church. He's not against us. He promises us that. I'm there for you. I'm not against you. And as difficult as it may seem, you can lay your head down, close your eyes, and rest in peace. You know, he even says to us sometimes, he'll make us lie down in green pastures. He says, even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even if you're going through that, that tough time, He'll bring you to the lush pastures, the green pastures to make you lie down and rest. Recuperate, get your strength again. But we have to shift the responsibility. We kind of hold on to it. It's my problem. I've got to sort this out. What about the, the scripture that says he's closer than a brother? Yes, I know we will have problems, we will have difficulties. We have an adversary. We will have conflicts. There will be wars. There will be diseases. And I know Jesus promised us that life on earth is not just going to be the easy peasy that we think it might be. He never promised us a bed of roses. He spoke of a cross and a bitter cup and of self-denial. But I don't want you to put you off and say that God is not interested in your life. He is. And the reason He told us these things in His Word is, is because He knows that when we enter into the kingdom, there are difficult decisions that we're going to have to make. Sometimes the decisions we make and the consecration of our faith is going to lead us to be persecuted. But all along he's told us, fear not, for I am with you. Fear not, because I will give you the strength. You know that in the last 14 months or 15 months that the world has experienced this pandemic, It has put many, many people's faith under a pressure that wasn't there before. This is my point of view. I'll say it's a small price to pay for what God has in store for me. A small price to pay to experience pressure Of some disease which is can't see it don't know where it comes from it's just all of a sudden and then you're sick just heard this week young man that used to come to our church has contracted COVID and now his whole family has it He's not seriously ill. Thank the Lord for that. 
But he has it. It's pressure, church. You know, it might not be persecution of some dictator standing there and saying you have to renounce the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But it's a persecution that puts you into a, a position of you need to be isolated. Puts you in a position of saying, Lord, where are you in all this? Why is this happening to me? Why is this happening in our country? Let me take you down to the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, there was a mother. She had two sons. She makes a request to our Lord Jesus when he was on this earth. And she says to him that her sons should be sitting on either side of him in his kingdom. And you know what Jesus replies to her? Go with me to the book of Matthew chapter 20, verses 21 and verses 22. And uh, hopefully we have that in the King James Version. And he said unto her, he was white. She said unto him, Grant that these two sons of mine may sit, one on your right hand side and one on the other on the left hand side in your kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, You know that what you ask. And then he goes on, he says, Are you able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of? And be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they shall say unto him, We are able. I'll read it to you in another version and maybe it will make more sense to you. Jesus is telling this woman, it's not mine to give seats. If you follow me, there's no time for you to be sitting. Instead, here is a cup. Here is a cross. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. You see, as a child of God, it's not about the position. It's not about just the gains. It's about self-denial and even death-dealing crosses. To enter the kingdom means making decisions, making decisions sometimes that will lead us to be persecuted and to suffer. Jesus goes further in Matthew chapter 16. Let me just find that. Chapter 16, verse 23, and Jesus is speaking to Peter. And he even accuses Peter of being Satan. He says, get away, Satan. You are a dangerous trap for me. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God's. Now we have to watch out as believers and as children of God that we are not seeing... The things that are taking place in this world with a pandemic and restrictions as that from a human point of view we have to look at it from God's point of view what good is coming out of what we're experiencing in the world right now well I can just give you a mention that 
in this time of COVID that our church itself has grown exponentially. It doesn't look like it when you look around here. But our online viewing has grown exponentially. People all over the world are listening to the words of our Lord Saviour. And it's not just our church. It is many, many churches out there who are showing and saying that since they have been forced to go into a mode of preaching to a camera, they have seen the hunger for the Word of God throughout the world. You know that because of the social media that's taking place and the word of God going out on social media. In the persecuted countries, countries who, what you call it, will put you to death at the mention of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are millions of people viewing and hearing the word of God. And the name of Jesus being mentioned over and over and over again. There are reports that in these countries there are thousands of people giving their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. Something that missionaries could not do because they would be imprisoned, they would be deported from the country some of them have even been killed I have a sister-in-law who spent many years in China she went there as a missionary but under the disguise of teaching English she was always put into a position of teaching in a remote little area in China. Under this restriction, you're never allowed to mention the name of Jesus. You're not allowed to openly preach. You can believe what you believe, but you are not to share it publicly. And how many times of her students have come to her in person and families have come and invited her to their homes to hear about the Lord Jesus Christ. You know when Jesus made the comment he said I'll send you the Holy Spirit and you're going to do greater things than what I could do. That's the very reason that we have the Holy Spirit Church is that we can spread the good news that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior for all of us because we're not limited to a one person a one place we're not finite you know that social media has pushed it out there this COVID thing has made it available for all the world to see you know even in countries where they say they have blocks on the emails and 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 blocks on social media and that there's people out there recording things and saying it's nonsense we just have to go to a different site and we can see it and we can view it and we can hear it You know, we, and I don't know, I hope, I hope you all believe the earth is round. I hope we don't have any flat earthers here. That everyone believes the earth is round. You know, the Bible tells us that Jesus is going to appear in the sky. And we'll all see him. Well, I, I, you got to think of that. That's an impossibility. As the earth is round. 
But you know, with the technology and the things that are taking place in this world today, it's not impossible. Everyone can see him at the same time. Whether there's time differences, whether we're on the other side of the world and whether we're in day or whether we're in the night, in the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere. At the same time, instantly, we can see the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me move on. Merely from a human point of view? No. Not from God's. That's what Jesus said. Then he said to his disciples, If anyone wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways, take up your cross, and follow me. Turn from our selfish ways, pick up our cross, and follow him. Now turning from our selfish ways, church is denying ourselves. Well, you know, one thing that this pandemic has, has, has caused is, is that people have to deny themselves. You cannot just become so selfish. There's people out there that are helping others these days. Because there's people that are fearful to go and do their own shopping. There's, pe there's, there's people that are fearful to be coming close to anybody else. You know, when Jesus said, you need to pick up your cross, it's not his cross. It's not the cross that he went to Calvary with. It's the cross that you have to bear, that I have to bear. My cross is not your cross. It's personal. I know we want to follow our Lord Jesus Christ. But I also know that it means commitment. And even commitment unto the point of risking our own lives. You know, in the book of Revelation, Jesus tells the church of Smyrna, chapter 2. Is it chapter 2? Yes. Revelation chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. He says, I, I know about your suffering. And I know about your poverty, but you're not, you're not poor, you're rich. You are rich. He goes on, he says, verse 10, Don't be afraid of what you are about to suffer. And then he goes on, he says, The devil will throw some of you into prison to test you. You will suffer for ten days. But if you remain faithful, even when facing death, I will give you the crown of life. Church, I want you to take those words of our Lord Jesus Christ seriously. He says, He knows about our suffering. He knows about what we're going through as the body of Christ. But we must realize we are rich. We have God on our side. He says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of, of the things you're experiencing, the pressures that are out there. Don't even be afraid if you're imprisoned. If the devil puts it that way and makes you imprisoned. It might be a test for you. But I want you to remain faithful. I want you to hold on to my promises. The hope that we have in our Lord Jesus Christ. And then someday I'll give you a crown. See our gracious Lord and Savior knows everything about you and me. And he wants us to be faithful. Is it going to be easy? 
I don't think it's always going to be that easy. But he says he'll never give us a burden that's too difficult to bear. So we just have to keep on going. To be faithful in all circumstances. Don't let the enemy rob us of our joy and our victory of our life. Let us lift up our heads. Let us lift up our heads and say, I have found something that is worth dying for. I'm sold out for the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm sold out for His Word. I'm sold out for what I believe. And I don't want to have pie in my face as Peter had when, when he says to Jesus, I'll never deny you. But right now, in my heart, in my mind, my very being will tell you, I'm willing to die for my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm willing to suffer. Whatever comes my way. And not to forsake my Lord Jesus Christ. Because I know I've taken possession of my inheritance. I've taken hold of the full inheritance that He has in store for me. I set my eyes on the things that will endure forever. The things of above. I'm not going to just eke out a living here on this earth. I'm not going to be downtrodden. Because he made me a promise. Just a small promise. I'm his. I belong to him. You know, and in Matthew chapter 5 verse 10, he says, Blessed are they. Blessed are you, those who are persecuted for doing right. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Is God interested in our lives? Most definitely his church. You know, Jesus came to establish his kingdom here on earth. So that we can carry on and expand it and grow it as we live our lives as examples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not downtrodden. Not holding on to the things of this earth. Living in self-denial. Being faithful. Trusting our God. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that you gave it all. You didn't hold back in any way, Lord, to save me. To put me in a position of right standing with the Almighty. You've restored my soul. You've changed my heart. You've infused me with your Holy Spirit, Lord. You've put me in a state of being born again. All the old things have passed away, Lord. All things have become new. My hope, my trust and my future are in you. Amen. I just want to ask you before we close this morning church that in your prayers in the week that lies ahead if you would uh, join me in praying for, for this church um, we are seeking somebody to come and do the praise and worship for us 
somebody that uh, is musical, uh, someone that loves the Lord, and that the Lord would send someone, uh, as he has in the past, uh, that would come. And when we are allowed to openly praise and worship the Lord and, and make a joyful noise unto the Lord, uh, that we would be ready. I also ask you that you would prayerfully consider we uh, at this stage don't have a Sunday school. Not that we have kids in the church this morning or very often. But it's one of the things that we are lacking is uh, somebody to uh, take on the, the role of children's ministry. Because there are children that would like to come. There are families that have children. They struggle to, to keep their children in a service for the duration of the whole service with us. We don't, we're not looking for a daycare. <laughs> we're looking for somebody that feels that that's their ministry. So if you would prayerfully consider that. I thank you all for your prayers. Even those that are online, that are praying for us, and not only for our church, but, you know, we, we're part of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, the universal church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and we as a church need to be praying for our other brothers and sisters in other churches as well, to lift them up. Because there are churches that are struggling. Struggling not only because of the restrictions, but struggling because people's hearts have gone cold to the Lord. I just want to pray for a minute for, for the, those that have, have, have slipped back and have grown cold to the Lord. Heavenly Father, you know exactly who they are. Even in our own families, Lord, we have those that have forsaken you, Lord. Walked away, turned their backs on you, Lord. Lord, as the end is near, your coming is imminent, Lord. I pray, Lord, for an outpouring of your spirit, Lord, as never before. A softening of hearts as never before again, Lord. For people to be drawn and coming back to give their lives to you again, Lord. To once again, Lord, to come and to worship you and accept you as Lord and Savior. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. In Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat>